This is a play. What is a play? A play is a way to get good luck from other people's bad luck. A play is like content, but alive. This is a play at Kaj. Kaj is a garage in Gowanus. Tonight, Kaj is an international wellness corporation. And this is a play about changing. About turning into something you didn't necessarily want to turn into. About turning into something you didn't necessarily know you wanted to turn into. About how we're always talking about what might change, how we might change, what we can do to change. About how we want to be different so badly, and how that can happen sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't make you feel the way you want to. And that's theater. <laughs> One time in Athens, we met an actor whose name was Dionysus, like, like the, the god of wine and parties. And Ethan wrote on the back of his Vespa. I did. Dionysus was on a Greek Netflix show, and he was the friend of our Airbnb host, who was also a Greek actor. And they came to a gay bar with us and kind of pretended they were bi and flirted with us. But then they were just there to pick up girls. That really happened. And you cried at the end of the night. I had had a lot of beer, which I don't really drink, and to which I may have a slight chemical intolerance. And also, it can be overwhelming to be in Greece. Greece is really old. But the point is, the theater will never die. And now we begin our play flower, spider, cow, which are things that people turn into in Greek myths. If you want to applaud, feel free whenever. If you want to laugh, control yourself. If you want to cry, by all means. If you have to pee, the bathroom is on stage. <laughs> and we welcome you to pee at any time. And we will pause the play. Just raise your hand. Okay, that's it. Act one, Narcissus. Here at Kaj, we celebrate the unexpected and the luxurious. When it comes to taking care of your body, your mind, and your soul, Kaj has everything you need to meet the future with fresh, detoxified eyes and skin. Whether your skin is oily and gross, or dry and gross, Kaj knows exactly what you need to become who you've always suspected you could possibly have been meant to be. It's time to change yourself, to become who you always, already were. You were always someone else, and you didn't even know it. And that someone else was healthier, had more vibrant skin, and experienced regular, soulful orgasms. We celebrate the underdog. We pick up people who have fallen down. We shift the paradigm before it shifts us. Is anyone else horny? It all starts with you, and your gut health, and me, and eating an awfully peppery soup four times a day for the rest of your life. Gosh, we do body, mind, soul, spirit, gut. Not the other way around. <laughs> Narcissus and Echo sit at an open floor plan conference table at Kaj Corporate in a place like San Diego. The office is a field filled with blooming yellow flowers and office furniture. Narcissus is chief executive innovator, a charismatic millennial influencer. Echo is her young assistant, a recent graduate of Codependence Anonymous. Do you have a minute? Yeah, sure. I need you to make sure that I have a room temperature bed that the all hands this afternoon on it. I'm so obsessed with my phone. <laughs> Me too. I just open the camera and I stare at myself and my thumb almost takes a picture and sometimes I do. And sometimes you do. <laughs> and I think, that's, that's me. me. <laughs> but it's actually turned around. It's not what I look like to you. I know. How are you? 
what do you mean? Like, how's your family? How'd you know I have a family? You're so funny. Thanks. I need someone to help me determine my personal boundaries and preferences and to respond to comments made to me online and in person. I need someone who knows me well. Do you think you can do that for me? No problem at all. Cool. I'll give you a key to my brownstone and you can start watering my plants. Absolutely. <laughs> Can I be honest? Of course. Actually, I don't think I can be honest right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you. Me too. I'm going live on Instagram. I love that. <laughs> say hi to my followers. Hi. You have to say it louder. Hi. <laughs> Everyone says you're really funny. Oh. <laughs> they think we should do a podcast where we talk about what we think happens when we die. That's such a good idea. <laughs> I noticed you've been walking around the office a lot. <laughs> yeah, I have to get um, my steps in. I've been monitoring your steps. And they're big, healthy strides. <laughs> I'd love to see that here. Yeah. You have a future in body. Thank you. You should hang out more. Would you? I saw you were eating lunch at your desk. No, totally. I see so much of myself in you. Me too. I actually think like you're like me if I was you. I always think that. <laughs> Do you want to come to a party? at this place. I'll send a car. Yes. Great. Let's make a bid. Okay. We work at Kaj. We're going to have a room that's just for ghosts. <laughs> we work at Kaj. We're going to eat seeds on Fridays. <laughs> We work at Kaj. We're gonna smear, smear snail serum on our fifth eye before sober brunch. <laughs> we work at Kaj. We're gonna do primal scream therapy with your children before an all hands on meeting. <laughs> we work at Kaj. Of course we sell dildos that are made out of wet sand. <laughs> we work at Kaj. We're gonna use intimidation. <laughs> We work at Koch. We're going to tell you who you are. <laughs> you, you seem tired and sad. And we actually love that. <laughs> Narcissus and Echo are at a party. Thanks so much for inviting me. I don't want to be drunk, but I am. Are you OK? I'm not always like this. You're fine. Do you know that part in Vertigo when he dresses Kim Novak up like Kim Novak? <laughs> and it's like kind of gay. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen it, but I can totally imagine that. I think I'm in love with you. I love that. <laughs> you wanna dance? What do you mean? There's no music. We have to create our own reality, silly. I don't even know how to dance. Sure you do. You can walk, you can dance, and I know you can walk. I've seen you getting your steps in. Come on.
I'd like to introduce you all to the future of the brand. Say hello to the Kaj Flower. The Kaj Flower is an innovative activation strategy that provides turnkey solutions for translating ideas into seeds, growing seeds to flower, and then using that flower to drive business results. The Kaj Flower represents growth in a time of decay. The Kaj Flower celebrates change for change's sake. The, the Kaj Flower is looking at you. You're, You're absolutely, absolutely glowing. glowing. Say thank you. Echo walks past Narcissus's office. Knock, knock. This isn't a good time. I wanted to tell you, stop. I've been thinking about what you said, about how growth is kind of like love, and love is kind of like death, and the opposite of love is freedom, and <laughs> I need you to leave. <laughs> She has a harp and maybe wings.
Builders, a small group of Kaj graphic designers, enter a multi-purpose room on a rustic corporate retreat in the desert. They've just experienced an immersive team building ropes course called The Web. Incredible graphic designer with big dreams and even bigger talents. 
Hodge. <laughs> I always knew that I was bound for a place like Hodge, and I quickly put my gifts to use designing logos, and to use even designing logos, immersing myself in wellness, its capacity to change people's lives and make them feel like a lubed up artichoke heart that will never die. <laughs> Is anybody going to make a noise? Questions are not allowed. <laughs> this is my share song. I have a paw friend. It's at home. It's mine. And I love it. But I will not be disclosing any details about its species at this time. Moving on. I had my first sexual experience when I saw a video of Porky Pig drying himself off after taking a shower and running his towel between his legs in a playful way. And I noticed that he had no genitals. He was just smooth ham. <laughs> that has stated and it informs everything I do. It informs my graphic design, it informs how I team, how I innovate, how I dance at weddings, and how I speak to people who work in service. <laughs> I believe that the purpose of our work is to catch people, is to ensnare them, to capture their fantasies, and get them to believe in us by convincing them that they believe in themselves. We are not to be feared or swept away from the corners or killed. We actually protect people. I would fight with my fists and my elbows for this company, for this team, for this product. I would die with you all in the streets and I would be glad. Okay, that's it for me. <laughs> I'm the youngest of four, and I, um, well, I was always um, kind of dead air, you're losing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was always sort of the odd person out in my family. Like, we'd watch TV, and there'd be Porky Pig drying himself off, and I'd be like, he doesn't have any genitals. You cannot so, copy <laughs> other people's share songs. <laughs> um, well, I love my job. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I live in a condo and I always hear my neighbor hanging out with friends through the walls and they're always like, shut the fuck up to each other. And that's like in a fun way. And I always wonder if they're going to invite me over, but they never do. Um, so I had a really hard time in the web just now also. Um, I have a phobia of spiders and I also suffer from vertigo. So in this, I was afraid of being a spider and also getting eaten by a giant spider. Uh, when I was a kid, my mom would say, just think of Charlotte's web. But how do we know that Charlotte was ambitious to things that were smaller than her? Even if she did have a gentle person. All right, enough. Okay. It was so bad. I'm sorry. I'm, what is the point of this? Come again? What is the point of doing a share song? I, would, I, I, I really, I honestly would like to know. Please tell me why. Why, why are you in charge? And wh why are you bullying us? <laughs> you made them cry. You made them cry. Um, you have no idea what you're talking about. Your skepticism speaks volumes about your own limitations. <laughs> I am not bullying you. Am I bullying you? No. <laughs> I am teaching you how to speak, how to believe, how to want, how to weave, how to care, how to kaj. This is kaj, people. It's fucking kaj o'clock. <laughs> you are delusional. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do my best to slowly descend the castle stairs to your basement level mindset. <laughs> Not even going to be working here soon. What did you say? 
I said I am not going to be working here for much longer. I have accepted a job somewhere else. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> 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 not happy here? I don't think that's actually really any of your business, but no, I'm not. I am ready to move on. That's so exciting. Where are you going? I am going to be working at a smaller wellness startup that counsels recovering child actors. <laughs> I've never heard of that. Is that that's real? Of course it's not a real thing. This is bullshit. I want to do something meaningful with my life because, so I was a child actor myself and I know how difficult that it can be to feel like a real person after years of outsized affirmation and rejection and with drugs and just everything. What were you in? Oh, well, uh, yeah, my first job, um, <laughs> it was a guest spot on uh, Cherry's Boys. And then I was in an off-Broadway play by um, Bill Sizemore. Uh, no? Okay. Uh, 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 a few in these here. You were in Cherry's Boys? I was. Stop. This is not a share song. And it really, no, it really fucked me up. And I got this really spotty education from tutors who wanted my autograph, and I had to work really hard on my anger towards my parents, but I know how to help people. And I thought that I could do that at Kaj, but it's just becoming untenable. It's very moving, but this is not the exercise. I only worked here for three months, and I've seen the commitment to, to this wellness thing it is a total ruse. It, it's made all the more noxious by people, people like you, people who have good ideas and are respected for exactly one day, and then their ideas are taken by people with fewer ideas but with more authority. What did you just say? And all you do, all you do every single day is squeeze the only actionable part of the idea, like, like it's a little, it's a berry, and then you smear the juice that gets on your hands, right, <laughs> on some half-baked project that's designed to make regular people who just want to feel better agree to check a box that gives away all their most valuable information. It's a carnival of mediocrity led by you. You, a humorless clown with a short ass crack. This job, this job is basically like being a child actor again, right? And, and staring into the eyes of, of an adult who, who wants you to lie to them over and over and over again. And I am sick of it. How dare you speak to me that way? You want me to share about my experience? That is my experience. I don't like hearing about your experience. <laughs> well, then maybe you shouldn't be doing share songs. What did you just say? <laughs> you heard me. During the following song, Weaver 3 and Weaver 2 engage in intense hand-to-hand -hand combat in extreme <laughs> slow motion, while Weaver 1 tries to keep them away from each other. The fight start, starts off very slapstick and scrappy, and slowly the ridiculousness of the violence becomes beautiful and terrifying. It gets really, really intense in a way that only a gifted choreographer could unlock. By the end, they're back in the web, they have multiplied, and it's really sexual and bizarre. <laughs>
The singer appears again in front of the curtain, having downed a mint show martini and now wearing formal wear. <laughs> Space in North Brooklyn, a documentary filmmaker is recording footage for an upcoming HBO documentary about nefarious activities that took place at Kaj from about 2014 to 2017. My journey begins three years ago, after ex early experiences as a child actor, and after having employed the services of a child acting deprogramming counseling service, I was interested in exploring the concept of escape. And it wasn't just me who was interested in this topic. It seemed like everyone in the world was curious about what it means to be confined, what it means to escape, and what it means to look for meaning in a world that asks more and more of us while giving us less and less. Podcasts, articles, documentary films, they all seem to be searching for answers to the same question. The question was, is there a way to live? And who knows how? Where is the truth? Can I find it? And will I like it? 
The more questions I had about this topic, the more I realized, as a recent graduate of Yale, I could go searching for answers wherever I wanted. And I could provide those answers in compelling, ambiguous ways in my own documentary for HBO, and those answers could be questions. So I invested a portion of some of my own money in an independent documentary film production company and went in search of my first muse. Kaj was that muse. I began a rigorous investigation into what I like to call the Kaj Industrial Complex. I excavated and exposed the sordid underbelly that keeps the lights on at this now ubiquitous wellness company. My journey begins with a conversation with a woman who asked to be re to referred to as EO, a woman who worked as a brand consultant for Kaj for over six years. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience at Kaj? I, I don't really know where to begin. Wherever you want. It's your story. imagine that they could be different. Even the fantasy of, of being something else or, or being better or being something other than what you are as consumers, you know, um, that's just the whole thing. Uh, it's everywhere. It's, it's how you get people to look and click and want. That's the stuff of life. It was probably there before I became an audience development specialist. I mean, cave people probably used to say the same thing back in cave times, but with rocks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe there was one cave person that was uh, in charge of getting the other cave people to want fire. <laughs> 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 Maybe there was someone who got the other cave people to want like a better kind of rock. Um, or maybe we're just living with the ghost of that cave meat. We're all kind of doing things because we think that we need fire. Like we, we think it's as urgent as all that. Um, but it's not. It's just wellness. <laughs> wellness is survival. Wellness is kind of the fire of our times. Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> but then the head of the company he kind of he kind of started taking a liking to me and we began working more closely and he and he said to me, we can really make something of this company the head of the company, um, like the guy who's regularly golfing or sampling a Japanese whiskey and is barely ever around. He was telling me that he had a vision and that I was a part of, of that. He said, we could change the way people wellness. The way people wellness? Uh, the way people be well. The way they get wellness in their bodies homes and, and the bodies of the people they know. How did it feel when you first started talking to him? <laughs> I mean, it was intoxicating. The person with all the power wants to talk to me. It was all very discreet because, of course, we didn't want people talking, but the culture of the company, I mean, it was very convivial, uh, collective. It, it really was kind of like a <laughs> I don't 
<laughs> uh, it didn't have boundaries. <laughs> I know we use that word a lot these days. Uh, but it really was this place where <laughs> boundaries just didn't even need to exist. It was like a family. Family <laughs> really energized and hydrated and expressive people. And I was at the center of that. So, um, yeah, we started hanging out and everything was great. And he was like, do you want to be a part of the special think tank? And I was like, duh. Uh, and at first it was just us and, and he was like, I'm Zeus. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? I thought your name was Paul. And he was like, it's actually Zeus. And you're going to have to call me Zeus. So I called him Zeus. And... Um, yeah, that's when we started having a lengthy, passionate affair. And it was intense and electric, and he was so charming, but in this way that was also scary. And um, we all know how these kinds of things work. You know, we've all watched the movies about it, and um, we know the dramatization of it, and it's boring. We all know it's, it's this boring, riveting thing. So I'm not going to talk about that. Um, and I said I wasn't going to talk about that. Do you want to say more about it? I really believed in his vision for the company. And I loved that he believed in me, and I just want to celebrate that. But there were cracks. There were definitely cracks. He was, well, he had a temper. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yeah, he had a temper. Boy, did he have a temper. <laughs> <laughs> and he was lazy. I realize even now I'm making it sound like he did all these things to transform the company, but he didn't. There were a lot of video games, and sometimes there was prolific output, but it was it was nonsense. Like one time he sent me a Google Doc he titled "We Will Be Well," and it was just one page with eight point font and all this. I didn't know what he was trying to say, but we laminated it and we hung it on the wall. <laughs> His wife found out I was doing a lot of naked improv at the house. <laughs> the house that he had bought for the eye, and that's what the think tank was called. It, it, and it wasn't just me at that point, it was a lot of people in Long Island. And there were a lot of puppets, and it was this really odd time, but it was also a special time. Uh, we were performing and innovating, and I was starting to wear bell sleeves. <laughs> and there was this idea that we could really change what it means to be alive, to be thriving, and, and to get really old. It was a lot about longevity. It's hard to explain, but those puppets and that house were my home. And we were channeling the ghost of, of, Zeus, uh, I mean, of Paul's grandfather. <clears throat> it, was really, it was such a special time. His wife was cool with it, uh, which was kind of a shock at first. She was down with the naked improv and the puppets and me for a time. Uh, but then she turned me into a cow. And locked me in the chamber. Sorry, what's the chamber? <sighs> so I was in the chamber for three weeks. I think um, I was brought grass and water. That's it. All I could do was moo. Um, the chamber was bugged. Uh, Watergate style, like wi wire tapering and all those old school 
surveillance, there was a film camera taping my every move. And someone would come and switch the film. It sounds so fucked up, but I really think I, I learned something from it, ultimately. <laughs> I learned something about, you know, what it means to be honest. Can you say more about that? Well, I don't expect you to get it. I mean, I learned it over the course of several weeks. I just can't say more about what I learned for some little documentary. Fair enough. I loved my job. I loved my experience working at Cage. Kaj. <laughs> I couldn't trade that for anything, and I loved the I. I believed we were doing important work. We were creating value. We were creating values. Is, is that a crime? What well, was the money laundering that was the crime? <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I really don't have that much to say. Did you know that the Greek word for actor is actually hypocrite? I didn't know that. Yeah, hypocrite, actor, pretender. And did you know hypocrite sounds a lot like hysterikos, the Greek word for hysterical. What does that have to do with what we're talking about? Well, you know, historically, women are thought of as these hypocritical actors with fake pain. And when I was doing what I was doing at Kaj, and, and especially the work with the eye, we actually talked a lot about acting and how you can shift how the world sees you. Like, you can take, like, how can you take patriarchy and make it kind of work for the product? <laughs> <laughs> and how can you do that in service of helping people care for themselves? I don't really follow. It's just... Being online, you see things and it, it, it can create this double meaning, can it? Like, like sincerity and ambivalence get tangled up in each other. And, and we were harnessing that ambivalence and that irony and really kind of rooting it in the body and the puppets and also just brand personality? I'm sorry, I should really take this. Can you hang a sec? Just hold that thought.
End of Act Three, the curtain falls. A giant chorus of actors comes out single file in front of the curtain to deliver the epilogue. <laughs> Changing looks 
like without you. Yes, I'm talking to you. I don't want to go somewhere without you or grow into something closer to who I've always wanted to be if you're not there to see it. I used to worry about what this would feel like. I would relish in the pleasure of the worry, cry so much that it felt good. But the worry was actually a way to never feel it. Not actually. It was a way to not feel alone in a room full of people. It was a way to not feel like the world is a giant mall and my phone is dead. But you need to feel that way sometimes. Worrying about it is so much worse than when it actually happens. But of course, it's hard to have something slip away and then just be like, I have to brush my teeth and put myself to bed.